I also wanted to talk about climate change. Um, your, your mayor, Rich Crotty, has been a great leader and a partner as it relates to climate change. And we're both Republicans. <laughs> and uh, as you may know, um, Republicans typically aren't known for being in the forefront on the environmental issues. Um, but that's obviously changing. Um, I had an opportunity to have a summit just like your great mayor did uh, in Miami back in July and really co-sponsored it in essence with Governor Schwarzenegger of California. And, and he's been a great leader in this arena too. And, and I can tell you, as somebody who grew up in Florida, I was born in Pennsylvania, but I moved to Florida when I was three years old to St. Petersburg. Grew up there. I love it. I love Florida so much. It's just it's such a great place to live, to work, to raise a family, to, to visit for our 85 million tourists, pretty important industry to this part of the state especially, but to all of it too. But let me relate it to tourism and the economy for, for just a moment, this issue of climate change and protecting our environment. It is critical. You know, all the issues that we talk, they're all important. All of them are very important. But I can tell you that if we don't protect the planet, all those issues go away. <laughs> I mean, think about it. So, you know, and as a Floridian especially, you know, we do, we get all these wonderful tourists every year. You know, like I said, about 85 million every single year. Why do they come here? I don't think they come here because she's ugly. <laughs> because she's beautiful. I mean, Florida is absolutely, and warm. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's such a beautiful place. I, I uh, you know, when you get elected governor, you get this really neat house in Tallahassee. They call it the Governor's Mansion. It's going to tie in, I promise. Um, <laughs> where's the guy going with this? Um, no, it uh, it ties in because when I when I moved in, um, there was some there's nice artwork that people loan to the to the mansion, and it's very kind that different museums and institutions do that. Uh, but I thought, you know, maybe we could change it up a little bit. And there are these painters that I have admired you know, virtually all my life, called the Highwaymen. And if you're familiar with them, some of you are nodding your heads, they're, they're African-American painters that got their name, the Highwaymen, because they did these Florida scenes and they sold their paintings on the side of the highway. There go the name Highwaymen. I understand there are also highway women uh, that are part of that, that group as well, which is great. But these paintings, if you've seen them, you know how vibrant and vivid the colors are in those paintings, and they're all Florida scenes. And, and, Congressman, you know, when I look at them, sometimes I think, my gosh, it can't really be that pretty, can it? Is it really that, that gorgeous? And it almost looks like you're looking at, you know, fluorescent colored paint. But if you get up early enough in Florida before the sun comes up or you watch one of these beautiful sunsets that, that we have the pleasure and grace to see, you see that those high women got it just right. Florida really is that beautiful. And that is a major reason why we do so well with tourism. It's such a special place to come. So, so my message to business leaders on this issue of climate change is that if we don't protect Florida, we may lose a lot of business. In my, in my view, economically, our economy and our environment are inextricably linked together. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, if people in Central Florida want to continue to have that many people come here, pick up the trash. <laughs> Make it look nice. Take care of it. You know, and, and by the way, you're protecting God's work. So think about that. It's kind of an important thing to uh, bear in mind. And, and so I want to thank Rich for, for what he's done in climate change and his leadership in that issue. It's something that's very important in our administration and our legislative branch has done great work. And Lee in particular is going to do a lot of great work this session, Senator Constantine, and I'm, I'm pleased about that and I'm in debt to you for it. Uh, but on energy issues and other things, uh, he's just been great. He's been a tremendous leader. And, and I will tell you, you know, just a, a couple of snippets about climate change and how it's already affected things in Florida. One of our utilities, I, I used to not be a fan of utilities. It's starting to change because um, they're doing so good lately, so well lately, my mother would say. Um, but they are. Um, you know, I used to go uh, kind of at them about their rates when I was attorney general. But, and they could always be lower. That would always be nice. But... In addition, when, when I got elected governor and we embarked on the climate change issue, um, Florida Power and Light in particular was on record and, on, and in the schedule to go ahead and put up a coal plant near the Everglades. And I thought, you know, that just doesn't sound right to me. You want to put a dirty coal plant right near this precious thing we call the Florida Everglades? And um, 
you know, the Public Service Commission denied that opportunity. And the transformation in this one company alone has been amazing. Progress Energy, too. I mean, they're both, they're doing a lot in biomass, Florida Power and Light in wind energy and solar. They have already scheduled to build the largest solar energy plant in America, in South Florida. They're going to spend $2.4 billion. You talk about there being gold in green and in going green. The jobs that that will provide to people uh, where they build it, it's just it's phenomenal. So I'm very, very pleased about what's happened on, on climate change and very indebted to you, Rich.